Let's go over the human skeletal system and we're going to go over the first part of the axoskeleton, getting to understand the skull. All right, so the human skeleton has got all these bones, the cranium, scapula, humerus, pelvis, femur, patella, the talus, fibula, tibia, ulna, radius, sternum, ribs, the vertebral column. So the head itself, the bones of the head that's called the skull, but the cranium is the part that gets to protect the brain. We also have the scap, the cravicle. Okay, we also have the cravicle there, right? So apart from just what we are able to see here, we have got we have got different types of bones. Of course, this is a cravicle. We have got different and different types of bones that the human being has, and those are going to look at them uh, individually. Right. So let's go on. So the, the human skeleton is there to uh, to support the the weight of the body to protect inner parts and it is also there to aid in movement. So the human skeleton has got 206 bones. And the human skeleton is going to be classified into the axial skeleton and the appendicular skeleton. The axial skeleton itself has got 80 bones, of which 22 bones are on the head. And then you have got the sternum in front there. You have got the ribs and there are 24 of them. And then you have got 33 bones on this vertebrae column. Right. So that is how we get to divide the axial skeleton, the one in blue. Now let's understand it. Or oh, to understand the axial skeleton, we're going to start with the skull. Now, the skull has got also a different classification. Of course, the whole bone which makes up the head, that's what we call the skull. Now, the colored bones here, the bones of the face, we call those as viscerocranium bones. So that's the viscerocranium. And then the one which is not colored, that's called the neurocranium or the cranial bones, which gets to protect the brain. So that is a classification. We also have just the upper part of the neurocranium, just the upper part that is called the calvaria, just that upper part is called the calvaria, right? So let's start with the viscerocranium or the facial bones. So the bones of the face, we have got the nasal bone, this bone, when you touch the top of your nose, the bone which is there is called the nasal bone. And it is a paired bone because there is a cut actually on the middle here, which gets to divide the left and the right. So it is a paired bone. We also have the lacrimal bones, which are found more inside your eye like that. Okay, those are the lacrimal bones. You can see them more in the side view. Also have the zygomatic bone, which is a cheek bone. This one here, which is also this one. That's the zygomatic bone. And then we have got the inferior nasal concha. It's more found inside such that in the side view, you will not be able to see it also, right? So the zygomatic bone and the lacrimal bones, those bones are paired, meaning that you have got one on the left, one on the right. Same with the zygomatic, you've got one here, one here. The inferior nasal concha is also paired. You've got one on the left, one on the right. And then we've got the vulva. So the vomer is this one which you are able to see inside the nose down there. That's the vomer. And it is unpaired, meaning it is just alone. It doesn't cut to differentiate the left and the right. Got the maxilla, which is also paired. Okay, the maxilla can cut on the mid. You are going to have the left side and the right side. You have also the mandible. Okay, the mandible is unpaired because it doesn't cut just one right so these are the facial bones or the bones which are found on the face or the visceral cranium so this is the vulva remember we said the vulva is more on the inside down the nose inside of the nose down there so this you can see it more when you get to cut a person sagittal right so this is the vulva, and then you also have the inferior nose, which we couldn't see in the side view, 
on the previous diagram. So here we couldn't see in the side view the inferior nose coche. It's also found inside the nose there on the sides. So this is the inferior nose coche in green here. Okay, so this is the one. Now let's look at the cranial bones or the neurocranium, those bones which protect the brain. So for those, we have got the frontal bone, the bone found in front here. It's a frontal bone and it's unpaired. It's just one, doesn't cut anywhere. Unless in babies, there are going to be a suture here, the newborn babies, metopic suture. So it's going to divide these two and they're going to be paired. But for adults, it's unpaired. We also have the parietal bone. You can see it this side and also this side. So actually there are two because there is, there is a suture on the middle here. So they are paired. Also have the sphenoid bones. Sphenoid bones, you see it more in the inside. It's just one bone. It's not paired. So you can see it this side of the, or this side or even just through the nose there. So that's a sphenoid bone. And it's unpaired because just one. Also, the ethmoid bone. The ethmoid, uh, actually, I'm, I'm even from pointing ethmoid instead of sphenoid. So the one I'm just from pointing on inside the nose, that is the ethmoid bone. It is unpaired, which is found inside. Now, the sphenoid is more found inside the eye inside the eye and we are going to see also it outside it is also unpaired bone like it starts from this one end it will go through the inside and come outside again you see it also is unpaired right you also have the temporal bone the bone that is found on the side that's a temporal bone and then you also have the occipital bone that's a bone which is found on the back Okay, so there's also this thing which protrudes, that's called the external occipital protuberance on the occipital bone. So that's the one you're able to see, external occipital protuberance. All right, now let's understand the bones which are found in the orbit or that opening where the eye is found. What are the bones there? So this part, we already said that's a frontal bone. It also extends to the inside. So we have got the frontal bone in the eye. We also said this is a zygomatic bone or the cheekbone. It also goes to the inside, so I've got the zygomatic bone. This is the maxilla. Note this opening. This is an uh, infraorbital okay, foramen. This is a foramen because it's an opening. Right. And then we have got this bone here. This bone is the maxilla, so it goes also inside there. That's the maxilla. And then we said this bone, which you are able to see from this side, and then it goes also inside. That is a sphenoid bone. And then also we said inside, if you look inside the nose, you are going to see the ethmoid bone. It also shows also here. And then you have got the lacrimal bone. Okay, the lacrimal bone is also uh, inside here, more closer to the maxilla. That's a facial bone, right? So another bone that we didn't mention is a palatine bone, which you are able to see in yellow there. That is between the maxilla, the ethmoid, and also the uh, the sphenoid bone. That's the palatine, this comma yellow one here. Right. Got also the optic canal. A canal is an opening where you can find things like blood vessels passing through or even nerves like that. So the palatine bone, you can see it more like that because it's more on the inside. That is why you can barely see it. It is just a small portion because it's more on the inside, right? So these are the bones we're just from mentioning. The temporal, you can see there is two. There, I mean, that is paired, occipital, it's only one. The parieto, there are two of them. Frontal is one, sphenoid is one, and the ethmoid is also one. So the ethmoid is more on the inside of the eye. So this is a cranial, these are cranial bones. We should be able to identify what bone this is. Okay, we should be able to identify what bone this is. We should be able to identify what bone this is and also hear what bone it is. Those are visceral cranial bones. 
So the earth mode bone, which we said is more on the inside, you can see that's the one in green, right? It's more on the inside of the, of the uh, head. And then this is a sphenoid bone. So it starts from the end, one end of the head, then you're going to see it also at the other end. So it looks like a wasp, and so it's called a wasp bone, right? So let's look at the sutures or the joints of the cranium. So cranium is part of the head that protects the brain, not below, right? So if you talk of below, then there are, not going, there, there are no sutures there. So a suture is a type of syndemosis that shows where the cranial bones will articulate. Synemosis is just a joint. So they are large in newborn babies, but get to become smaller and actually join completely as one grows. So a syndemosis is a fibrous joint in which two adjacent bones are linked by a strong membrane or ligament. That is a syndemosis. It's just a fibrous joint. So many that sutures are made up of fibr uh, fibrous joints, which is a syndemosis. So we have got a sagittal suture. A sagittal suture is a suture that passes on this along the sagittal plane. Sagittal plane is a plane that casts uh, a person imaginary on the middle, on the midline, right? That is the one sagittal plane. And then you have got a squamous plane. I mean suture. Even the other one I said plane, it is a sagittal suture. So this one is going to separate this bone here, which is the temporal bone from the parietal bone. So that's the squamous suture. And then you have got the lambdoid suture, which separates two parietal bones from the occipital bone. And this is the squamous, I mean the lambdoid suture. Okay, you also have the coronal suture. So it passes on the coronal plane, like it cuts a person into front and behind. So this suture here is called the coronal suture. So we also have the suture between the zygomatic bone, which is a visceral cranium from the visceral cra uh, cranium, which separates a suture be that separates the zygomatic bone of the facial bone and the temporal bone, which is from the the cranial bones. That is, you just connect the two words, zygomatic and temporal, so that would be zygomatic temporal suture. So that's the suture between those two bones. Also, have the suture between the sphenoid bone and the zygomatic bone, that would be called sphenozygomatic suture. Also, have the suture between the sphenoid bone and the parietal bone, sphenoparietal suture. Right, so those are the sutures. Now, if you can see on the temporal bone, we also have an opening there, and that opening is called an external auditory canal. That's where the the ear goes into the inside. Okay, you find the inside of the ear, right? So these sutures they are going to get to close as a person gets to grow. So like the metopic suture, you have not even seen on what I've shown because it gets to close by two and four years as a person gets to grow. So it's just found in infants. And then you are going to have a sagittal suture, which is going to close by the time we reach 30 and 40 years. The sagittal suture, which separates the two parietal bones, is going to, uh, to join completely. And then you're going to the, have the corona suture and the lambdoid suture by 40 and 50 years they are also going to join completely. So many that by 50 years, the skull will just be one bone, right? So what are the skull of a newborn baby? So on a newborn baby, we've got what we call fontanelles. A fontanelle is simply a soft spot on an infant's head where the bony plate that makes up the skull have not yet come together. Okay, so... Basically, there are six fontanelles, the anterior found in front, the posterior behind. We have got anterior lateral found in the side, but in front. Anterior means in front, lateral in the side. So the anterior lateral 
fontanel is a sphenoidal fontanel. And then I've got one found behind but in the side that is called a mastoid. That's posterior lateral. Now, these fontanels, most of them, they are going to close just by birth. But the one which is found in front, which is the anterior fontanel, closes by two years. So the lateral row and occipital, these are fontanels in the sides. They will close by two months after birth. This is high yield in the exam. And then the one on the back, the posterior fontanel, closes by six and eight months. And then the anterior, the one in front, will close by one and a half years and two years. Right. So these are the ones we are calling as fontanels. Okay, this soft place. This is anterior because it's in front. This is posterior. So the posterior by six and eight months, it closes. This one by one and a half years or two years closes. And then this one in the sides, by two months, they close. So this is where you say when a baby is born, the baby is breathing on the head. That's a fontanel, right? So this is what we're able to see. So the fontanels in the side, this is called anterolateral because in front and on the side this is posterolateral so the anterolateral is called the sphenoid fontanel sphenoid because it's also near the sphenoid bone and then the uh, posterolateral is called the mastoid fontanel right so as uh, sometimes the skull might be able to fracture or get to break so those breaks on the skull, they are called left foot fractures. Left foot fractures. And there are three types of left foot structures. So I've got left foot fracture one, left foot fracture two, and left foot fracture three. So left foot fracture one just breaks the maxilla. Okay, the maxilla is broken like that. That's left foot one. And then left foot two breaks it, the maxilla at one point, it goes up and also breaks the nose bone. And then you go and break the maxilla again. That's left foot two. And then left foot three is going to break, separating the zygomatic bone from the uh, from the sphenoid bone. And then goes in the eye also. It's going to separate this bone which is here. Okay, and also separates with a bone up. Also comes and breaks also the what? The nozzle bone. It passes above the nozzle bone and separates it from the frontal bone and goes over the other side. So we need to know what bones are going to be affected on these types of fractures. Well, this is the end of this tutorial. Hope it was helpful. Remember to subscribe. Stay